everybody, I'm Esther. I'm Nick. And we're Fauci-matic Offgrid. That's right. We've been meaning all day today and for actually days to sit down and do a Q&A video for this channel. We've been managing to keep up on our Mountain Dream Home episodes, which come out every other Wednesday and describe Nick building our off-grid dream home. But I just haven't had a lot of muscle to do our usual vlogs and kind of mixed up pieces about our off-grid lives. But we do still care about you. We did manage to pull off getting a, getting sat down. Nick's on an, an overturned um, pot here. We had to come out of the house because it's nearing nighttime. It's starting to get dark. Um, but we're here. Here we are. And we are going to answer some of your questions. What do you plan, this is a question we get all the time, what do you plan to do with the yurt when you move into the big house? Mm. What don't we plan to do with exactly. the yurt? Exactly, it's the bonus room. It's the everything else room. Um, at least in the short term, I don't think we're even gonna move our internet up to the house. So it'll be the office. It will be- uh, The school room. The school room. Uh, it will be the retreat, the uh, guest room, um, anything else that we can think of. Likely not much of a workshop. But, <laughs> That's the only thing it won't be. Right, but um, but it's just extra space for us. And we'll be pretty much keeping it intact. We'll take some furniture with us up to the house, some beds and and whatnot, but the, st the wood stove is staying in there and the kitchen more or less set up just so we um, so it's functional if someone wants to come and stay for a bit uh, there's a place and we plan for that to be our summer kitchen for me to do my canning for however long I'm doing canning in the summertime um, because our our dream home kitchen is pretty small and it'll be good for our winter needs but it just is so lovely to can outdoors in the summertime yeah um, this is a, an odd but fun question. Have you ever run into beehives inside trees you've milled? Mm, now, as think. he's thinking about this, for anybody who's new to our channel, uh, Nick is building our dream home out of timbers that cut from our land. So Douglas fir and pine has cut down quite a few trees yeah. and milled them. Uh, and I've thought about it and the answer is no. No beehives. Nope. But we'll let you know Never. if we, we'll take a picture of it if we do. Okay, here's a good one. Do y'all have jobs or you only work on your homestead? That mm. is such a complicated question. It is. It's a little, little from column A, little from column B. Um, we don't, I guess you could say, no, neither of us have jobs, as in we don't report to anybody and we don't go into work every day. Um, we both essentially freelance. Yeah, it wouldn't be true that we don't work. <laughs> right, we work all the time, either for on the homestead or for somebody else who pays us money. Um, so I still do a little bit of uh, work in entertainment uh, with an events company and I travel for that. Um, it's just stagehand kind of work. Um, and I also do, you know, cabinets and other little handyman things. Uh, uh, in town here um, and that generates a little bit of money and Esther I'm a writer so I am um, it's freelance it's it's not consistent but the way we live it's a really significant portion of our income and I hustle I, I work my little butt off um, trying to to make that go so that we have the money we need for the things we still buy. Do we think it's possible to do this kind of homesteading without some kind of outside income? Um, it, it would be a, a change in our lifestyle for sure if we didn't have any income. Absolutely. It wouldn't um, be what you're seeing on, this, on these videos. <laughs> right. Uh, eventually I would like to do more work on property um, just as far as producing something that I'm able to sell. Um, so that I don't have to travel off of the property to make money. Oh, right. Um, so uh, I don't think that we won't ever be completely self-sufficient, as in 
no outside money coming in because that just I don't think that's realistic but eventually I would like to not have to leave the property for work Mm -hmm. uh, I would have a non-property business and uh, Esther would as well being able to write from home mm -hmm. and we do occasionally um, sell our eggs or we've even sold a few chickens um, and it may be that we at some point are selling pullets too um, we, we haven't um, sis made a system with no. any of those things right. um, we can definitely see that as a possibility too but I uh, our greatest skills at this point are his carpentry and um, building skills and my writing skills. That's Those are the things we're best at and have spent the most time perfecting. Um, so that's at the moment how we make our, our bread. Great. Okay. Are you, Nick, this one yes. is for you, from a farm background? No. Nope. Uh, anything I could tell you more about that uh, I grew up in a farm town for sure um, all of my friends uh, worked on farms growing up my brother bucked hay and picked corn in the summers um, I did not I uh, either worked bagging groceries or uh, ran off to the Shakespeare Festival and did uh, uh, things on stage. Right, so, we're theater people. Right. We're rural people who went to the cities to do theater. We're kind of the opposite of a farm Exactly. Background. So, no, I have no farm experience at all. You? Well, no. Um, I My family had a lot of land I, when I was born. Um, but my family lost their 300 and some acres the way a lot of farm families lose their lose their land. You know, there was bad luck and there was some bad decision making and there was also um, just the, the changing of the times, you and know. And some bad weather, if I remember correctly. Right, there was a flash flood. I mean, just there you go. Re really hard stuff. And I'm sure that there are some, some farm families out there who know, have, have had similar experiences or have had neighbors have similar experiences. It's hard to hold on to a big chunk of land like that when you're, when you're just a person. So... I didn't have the benefit, or I would have at the time probably thought the drag, of growing up on 300 and some acres like my older brothers and sisters did, at least for a time. So no, I don't consider myself to be of a farm background ground either. No. This is a question we've answered several times, but we keep getting it. So we're going to answer it again. What does Fauchomatic mean? That's our channel title, right? Fauchomatic off-grid. Right. So my last name is Fauch. Always has been. Always will, as far as I know. Um, and when I uh, was building theater scenery right out of college, um, I always got the funny projects that had to do something, flip or turn or slide or change or, you know, do something clever and uh, wasn't ever really given uh, a whole lot of, um, I don't know, guidance or uh, I was left to figure it out a lot of times. So um, some people I worked with came up with that name um, for one of my contraptions that I had made and then uh, it kind of stuck to me as well. And then uh, when I had my own shop, that's what I called it. And uh, I guess I take a lot of that figure it out spirit in, uh, into what we're doing here as well. So it's the, it's the second half of automatic. Fouch automatic thoughtomatic right. or sledgematic if you've ever watched uh, Gallagher smash watermelons and whatnot so maybe we'll provide a link for that for your educational purposes okay so those were some quick ones here we're gonna stretch our legs a little bit we've had a couple people ask about the disadvantages of our lifestyle it's clear that we like what we're doing it's clear that we think it's it's working for us but um, we thought we'd get a little bit into the disadvantages of off-grid living. Right. Hmm. Well, I would say that, um, so we're out here and we don't have a whole lot of people telling us what to do. You know, we don't have a boss telling us what to do. Uh, we don't... Um, we don't have a homeowners association. We don't have a lot of the the rules and um, uh, schedule that a lot of people keep. But that means that it's up to us to make decisions almost moment to moment. And so 
with nothing to sort of fall back on as a template, we're left to make it up. So I'd say a disadvantage would be that um, there's no real guide for what we're doing, that we have to uh, create it or steal it or, you know, borrow from people who've uh, done similar things. But being in charge of your own life, you have to, um, you know, take the good and the bad with that. All the disadvantages are also advantages. I mean, Absolutely. <laughs> everything that's bad about this is, is also good. But I'd say that I completely agree with what Nick just said, that it's completely exhausting to be in charge of your own life. I mean, you start to see how it happened, that we created a society with so much um, kind of mass moving through shoots going where you're pushed you know you see why that happened because it's really hard to be responsible for your own decision making and and also there's so much humility in knowing your own limits you know it's really easy for the dream to get big and for the dream to get very sprawling and then you're just as as um trapped by your own expectations of a giant house and a whole bunch of livestock as you were by the job you left sure um, so I think that can get really um, exhausting. That's a lot of a lot of pressure. Okay, so practical stuff. Like, what do we what do we miss? I've got one for this. If you don't, go for it. Okay. So the, people ask me sometimes which appliance I miss the most, and I I felt it very strongly. Anybody who follows me on any social media other than um, YouTube already knows that I desperately miss a crock pot, an electric crock pot. And it, it's, yeah. I also talk about how great it is to have to pay attention to my food and there's a spiritual aspect to that, right? Does this sound like something I would say? It's really good to pay attention to my food and be involved in my food preparation. It's a, but Unless it's burning. But, <laughs> that is not fun anymore. But it's hard to pay attention that long sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> So you can't see it anymore, I don't think, but if you look back at some videos, recent videos, like the last Mountain Dream Home, you can see a little burn under my eye here. And I also had burns all up my arms. They weren't very bad, um, but it was a pain. Um, and that was from my apple butter that I did. I did four big pots of apple butter all at once on top of the wood stove. And that would have worked, except that we also, I started too late in the day. And we were also doing dinner at the same time, so we had to get this the oven hot enough. Was it bread in there? Something. And then we were also doing something on the stovetop. So the, the apple butter all got hot, and, and I can't just turn it down. <laughs> so I'm, And there's no place to put it, because I've got four pots of it. So I got burned, and I cried about not having a crock pot. But you know what, that isn't really a disadvantage to being off the grid because really that takes you back to what Nick just said. I, I could have a solar oven or I could have had a different technique for doing my apple butter in the first place. I think the hardest thing is that off grid, when you make a mistake, it's your fault. Right, right. Pretty much always. Yeah, there's no, there's no one there to boss you around, but there's also no one to blame right. when, when, you, when it goes wrong. Which it, which it does, right? It certainly goes wrong sometimes. Right. What else? What else do we miss? Um, I don't know. I don't really miss watching TV or sitting on a couch or... Um, yeah, we... <laughs> our I, kids uh, miss the couch. I'm, sh I'm we sure We haven't missed they it. Do. Our couch has been in storage these last three years. We haven't missed it. Um, I don't know. Uh... I guess just the ease of knowing, knowing what's next, you know, mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing for me is always having to make it up on the, on the fly. Yeah. I've gotten to the point where I miss neighbors, sure. which, which is lucky because we're about to get some, we'll, maybe we'll be able to introduce you to them at some point. You've got some folks who are, li who are moving in pretty close to us and the timing's great because I miss having neighbors. And I, I don't at all regret the experience of um, kind of being enough away from humans that I had to establish connection to the natural world and recognize that to be um, a source of entertainment and company and just 
stimulus, you know? You, there's a different level of awareness for the natural world, which actually can keep you a whole lot safer, you know, if you're really paying attention to what plants are what and what animals might be nearby. And I don't regret having gone through that learning experience, but you can also see why people started moving close to each other because to have some friends for the kids and some company for me, um, when we get neighbors is gonna be, I think, it's gonna be good. I'm ready for that. Now this one is a really hard one and we probably aren't going to be able to answer it at all. But I wanna respect that it's been asked. I have received a couple of emails um, asking, we really wanna be um, on the road to a more simple life, a more real life, or um, a, an, an ultimately off-grid life, but it's overwhelming to know where to start. Where should I start? We're not gonna be able to answer this well, <laughs> but I acknowledge that it's a great question and we're gonna give it a shot. Sure. I would say start where you are because that's that's what we did um, before we ever moved to Idaho when we were still uh, on the East Coast we started just by looking at where our food came from where our clothes came from uh, how much we were spending on this and that and pretty much scrutinized every aspect of uh, of our life and everything that came in and the the amount of uh, our own energy that we put into that um, and that really helped us make a lot of decisions about where we want our food to come from and 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 what value we place on the objects around us and our home and everything um, so it doesn't have to be that you make a big dramatic move you just need to look very carefully at your um, your lifestyle and your habits because a lot of the things that um, that you'll want to shed if you do want to go off grid or just live more simply um, are things that you've probably been doing your whole life mm. things that you take for granted um, conveniences that you think you need um, or even things that uh, that do take up a lot of your time and energy uh, that you don't really need. So just um, start by looking really hard at, uh, at what you already do. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And, and I would even use the phrase, follow the money. So it's, it's brutal. It's excruciating. But we used a book called Your Money or Your Life, which we've recommended before. We just did the first three steps. After that, it starts to get into the stock market and kind of gets dated and is not necessarily what direction we wanted to move. But the first three steps of your money and your life, you have to write down everything you're spending. <laughs> and just that in itself is something that'll change your life. Well, the first, yeah, yeah the first step is was uh, uh, add up all of the money that you've ever made in your life mm. up to that point. And it was staggering that, uh, you know, for two people who had zero in savings at the time. And debt. And debt that we had let that much money slip through our hands was, um, uh, ah! yeah, it was a <laughs> it was little brutal, right? A little tough. Right. So, so Nick and I are, are, are at our best when we do a weekly meeting about money. When we write down everything that we do and we meet weekly to look at every item um, and that's when we're at our best that's when we're at our happiest in terms of relationship and also in terms of getting things done and it's also when the homestead works the best it's hard to do that um, and we don't always but it was a, a time of really being disciplined at doing that that got us into the system that got us out of debt and also really changed our idea of what was possible um, you know, we're not the 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 luckiest as far as money goes. We did have debt, and we did have um, you know we haven't had amazing jobs all our lives. But we also aren't the unluckiest. You know, when this was happening, Nick did have a pretty nice job. So we recognize that we kind of are we're somewhere in the middle as far as money resources go. But wherever you are, um, 
you can be more in control of where those dollars are going. And, and just to respect that everybody wants that dollar that's in your hand. You know, there's so many voices clamoring for it and so many theories of who needs it the most and where it should go. Um, just giving yourself the, the space and time to pay attention to that and kind of get a hold of it, I think is really powerful for beginning a journey to any kind of a dream life, but certainly to a simple off-grid life. Right. So there, but then I would also say that you should just build some skills. You know, a lot of the skills that I employ out here, I, uh, I already had, but there was also a whole, uh, period where, you know, still living in an apartment, we were, uh, I was studying timber framing and went and took a class and you were studying a lot about, uh, cooking and canning. And we just tried to soak in as much as possible before it was time to actually, um, rely on those skills. Um, just, you know, just educate yourself and go to what interests you the most. Uh, because if you don't like what you're doing, then you're going to sort of, uh, you won't, you won't be able to sustain it, you know? So we yeah. both gravitated in different directions towards, you know, what we could do for the family. And, um, uh, but I think I, I'm really happy with the time that we spent, uh, just purely educating ourselves and finding those things. Yeah, and it gives you a chance to find your passions. And I would also add to that, depending on what your personality type is, that you should try things two or three times. You know, I always say that about herbs. If you try an, uh, something like a nettle tea, uh, the first couple times you hate it, you should try it at least three times because your body's learning what it actually is. And I had that experience with cooking and canning. I mean, the first time I canned tomato sauce, I did not like it. I would not say I liked it. <laughs> I would not say there was any passion for that. But once I kind of got the hang of it, now I really do enjoy it. And I feel very satisfied when I'm able to put up food um, for our family for the winter. Um, so building new skills, finding out what you're passionate about, trying things more than once. Well, thank you so much for watching our Q&A today or listening to our Q&A. Um, we wish you the best in your uh, off-grid plans or other homesteading plans. And feel free to send us an email or put another question in the comments. And we'll try to be a little quicker about getting to the next one. But thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for watching.